Well, welcome to this new tutorial, although I'm not sure it's a tutorial, whether it's a troubleshooting uh, setup. Um, this one is going to be about using an ESP32 with an SPI LCD touchscreen. Now, you'll notice in the uh, heading here, I've got um, you know 9481 or a 9486 I bought a 9481 off AliExpress as shown in the picture on this setup screen and uh, it comes with obviously touch screen um, 480 by 320 screen resolution and it's actually got an SD card holder in the back of it in fact what we'll do is we'll take a quick look at the Digital Town website so we can look at a slightly bigger photo so this is a close-up and as you can see there are no serial numbers on here the only serial number is down here which is for the actual touch screen because these screens are available with or without touch now the idea of buying this screen rather than the usual 8-bit sort of parallel screen which i've got to work on an esp32 but when they run on the esp32 i had some problems with getting wi-fi to work and for this particular project i need wi-fi as well as the touch screen because i want to use the esp now function so i've bought this screen and uh, let's have a look at the details so I got mine from AliExpress and this is the one I got, the 9481 IPS Touch. And if we whiz down to the specifications, 480 by 320, um, supply voltage 3.3 to 5 volts. Now be aware the logic is 3.3 volts. So you can power this screen itself with 5 volts, but don't start connecting this to a Arduino Uno or something because they have 5 volt logic pins, the digital pins are 5 volts and you will fry your screen. Now the next bit, uh, anybody who's used a normal uh, touch screen, normal parallel port one, you finish up with endless wires connecting to everything. So you can imagine my excitement, 4 wire SPI, oh yes, just 4 wires and maybe some power. In my dreams, let's have a little look at this. So I've done a pinout here because what you have is for the touch screen, you have one pin, which is the chip select pin. You have the data pin, the MOSI, and uh, there's a MISO as well, although I left mine disconnected because I didn't need any feedback from the screen. However, the screen also has a reset pin and there's also the LCD power which you can connect to a pin, although I'll be honest, I've connected mine straight through to the 3.3 volt because I don't turn the screen on or off. But that only deals with the screen itself. On top of that, you've then got the touch system. So for that, again, it's going to use SPI, so you're going to have to have a clock, you're going to have to have a, um, a digital um, a data in, a data out, and a chip select. And of course, if you want to use that uh, SD card on the back, guess what? You're going to go through all of this again. Now, obviously, some of these pins um, you can share between the different uh, the screen and the um, the touch system but with the best will in the world you finish up with quite a few wires and I've put the pin connections the pen uh, connections in the top of the script just so you've got them there they're also on the digital town website in the link that was in the introduction and will be under the video now, once it was all wired up, I ran a little uh, test script. You need a couple of libraries in here, which I'll go through in the script later. But once I'd fired up the sketch, it didn't quite work as I expected it to be. This is a red background, it's supposed to have some white text on a black background, and that little box there is supposed to be a white outline. In fact, when I first started it, it was even worse because I just wanted to put a black background and all I got was a white screen. 
So I didn't think the thing was even working at all. I thought I got a broken screen and uh, I'd actually got the touch system working before I started to figure out what on earth was going wrong with the screen. Now, the screen requires uh, a couple of libraries. The first one, if we just bring in the sketch, it requires uh, TFT ESPI, which is a screen uh, a library that deals with touch screens and then you need the SPI H library which uh, deals with the SPI uh, pins off the board. Now when you um, configure your screen let's just go to my configuration script there is a whacking great big file in the TFT ESPI library that you have to comment in and uh, comment in the various um, settings that you want. So as you go down, you can see that I've got all my pins in here. I've got the touch pin in here. A few fonts and bits at the bottom. I left these bits as standard, and. As I've bought a 9481, I had this line uncommented. Why wouldn't you? That's the screen that I've ordered. But if we go back to this screen, if you can see my red background is blue, my text is all the wrong color, and uh, in my case, you know, the whole screen was white originally. I was absolutely baffled as to what was going on. And eventually I discovered in this uh, setup script, there are two settings here, define TFT inversion on and TFT inversion off. Now, when the setup um, file is as standard, both of these are commented out. And I found that I had to uncomment this second one to get the screens the colors to work correctly so that was the first bit of good news the colors are now working and i thought brilliant i've got it all working great it was only then as i started to look a little bit closer and i'm thinking hang on a minute the text is backwards i've got a mirrored screen and this is where the real mystery came in why was my screen mirrored so I went through the setup file and obviously there's nothing in there about mirrored screens and scratch my head did a little bit of searching and digging on the internet and eventually I found nothing apart from one guy who was talking about he'd got the wrong drive the wrong chip then I started to think back because I've had some screens before where they've sent me the wrong screen and suddenly I thought hang on a minute let's go back to the AliExpress website so let's look at what I've bought I've bought a 9481 IPS touchscreen now you'll notice there's no other touchscreen so how could they get it wrong well they did I've got touch but I started, I thought, well, I'll uncomment the 9486 driver in the setup, which is what I did. And lo and behold, it works. So I actually have a ILI 9486 with IPS touch. Go figure. They've actually sent me something that they don't even sell. However, once that's all done, everything works great. And um, I now have the screen working correctly so let's have a look at this now so apologies for the appalling picture my phone doesn't like the particular colors that i picked i in my script i put a white boundary box around this was to give me uh, a check that the screen was the resolution that they said now it's supposed to be 480 by 320 in fact this boundary is running at something like 477 by 320. You know, it seems to have a couple of pixels that are under the black boundary marker that you can't see, so completely useless. But as you can see, it's all working, and uh, 
what we'll do now is nip down to the sketch so you can see what I've done. So this is my sketch as you can see it's titled ESP32 SPI9481 version 1. Who knew that this wasn't going to be a 9481 and was going to be a 9486 by the time I'd finished. Right I've listed some of the issues that I had in here and I've also listed the set of pins obviously you've got the screen pins and the touch pins there is a pin called pen um, I have no idea what it's used for and again I didn't use the SD card pins so two libraries SPI and TFT ESPI now this one is the one that you've got to uh, edit the user um, uh, underscore ES uh, setup.h file. I've included mine on the Digital Town website just so you can see that how I set mine up. Um, once you've done that you initialize, you know, invoke the library, get your setup running, go down to the setup, serial obviously, check everything's working, initiate the screen, set the rotation. I've set it to zero because I wanted mine um, uh, sort of in a different rotation. I didn't want the standard sort of landscape. I needed portrait for my setup. I then created a red background, put a white boundary box around the edge of the screen. As I said, I did discover that it was about 477 pixels because obviously zero is a pixel. I then have a box that's 10 by 10 and 10 pixels in and 10 pixels down from the left hand corner just so that I could check what was the top left hand corner. Some white text on a back, back, black background 40 pixels down 40 pixels in just it writes some text. So that was the screen side of things just so that I can check everything's working correctly. Then we go into screen press. So this is locating the X and Y locations of any screen touches. So let's go up to this now. Within my program, I use a value called X touch for the X value, Y touch for the Y position. I've also got these two variables here. Uh, you've got the touch timer and the debounce sensitivity. Now you might not think about debouncing a touch screen, but the problem is if you put your finger on that screen, it's going to keep reading almost like a button would keep sending signals unless you use some kind of debounce. There are obviously many situations where you wouldn't want debounce, but this is going to be for a model railway controller where I'm just turning things on and off, basically using it as a set of switches. So debounce is important for me, so I've put in 300 milliseconds, 0.3 of a second. So let's get into how screen press works. We've got a couple of uh, variables here, a couple of integers. I've got the current milliseconds. This is all part of the uh, basically the debounce routine. It's a standard debounce routine. So let's get into how we get the X and the Y. So there's a function to get the touch X and Y. And there is also a function that gets the Z. Now Z is the pressure. If you look at these readings I've got here, if I press lightly, 1536, if I press really hard, 2500. So this is measuring the pressure on the screen. Now my screen seemed to have a default value of about 50 going all the time. So I, don't, I ignore any touch that is below of pressure of 500. Then we get the raw X and Y, and this is where the problems turn up. So if we look at the screen, these values here, if I touch top left, you can see I was, uh, according to my readings, I'm X I got at zero, Y I got at six pixels. But if you look at the values that are passed from this routine, 373 and 290. Now the reason for this is that the screen, the touch screen resolution 
is not the same 480 320 that the screen is. In fact, if I go down to the bottom right hand corner and just roughly touch it there, you can see that it's got values of 3402 and 3651. So a much higher resolution touch than the screen resolution. So what I did, I subtracted those values that I got top left. I did a number of experiments until I got these. I came to these values and they gave me a zero and a zero. I then did a little bit of mathematics to see how many um, screen resolution pixels it was to the touch resolution pixel, rounded it all out. It's about 10 and 7 and that gives me a pretty accurate um, touch X and Y compared to the actual screen resolution X and Y. And then all I've done is serial printed this out just so that I can see it in the serial monitor while I'm testing. Obviously once I start writing the code I shall just comment this out and uh, I'll then be able to find as I create buttons on the screen where I'm actually touching. So that's a sort of a quick overview of how I've used this screen. As you can see there can be some issues when you're working with these screens. You might not necessarily have got what you ordered, but uh, persevere. Don't sort of sit there and think, OK, the whole thing has fallen apart. You know, the chances are you can fix the problem. So there's a link below the YouTube video and there's a link, as you can see, in the closing screen to some details on the Digital Town website. That is one heck of a long URL but uh, probably easy to copy and paste from YouTube. But if it's been useful to you, please click the like and subscribe, and I'll put the rest of the project up as I start to build it over the coming weeks. Bye for now.